Chronic Pain, The Inner Demon, back with another one. Now in this one, folks, you're going to see Ice Cube in an interview with Tucker Carlson. And folks, I'm telling you, after listening to Tucker Carlson for a long time, I'm starting to take a liking to this guy. He just tell it like it is. He don't hold back. He don't hold no grudges. And folks, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this. I don't see no prejudice in Tucker, Tucker Carlson. But at the same time, check out the interview with Tucker Carlson and Ice Cube. I'm telling you, Ice Cube didn't hold back no punches. He kept it real. And I'm telling you, folks, he delivered. Just check it out. I mean, you can do an interview with anyone. You're doing an interview with me. Obviously, you're, you're going to take abuse for doing that. Like, why would you do that? Um... Because I think it's silly not to talk to people. Um, I think whether we agree or not, right? that has nothing to do with it. You know, it's like this is what it's all about. Let's let's talk about it. Let's let's debate. And and you know, I've been shut Wait, out. That sounds like right wing extremism and <laughs> what about ism? What, what but I've been shut out, you know. Some some platforms will not have me on. Why? Um, they don't like that I'm, you know, an independent thinker. I'm not part of the herd. I'm not part of uh, the go along to get along gang, so to speak. So, um, you know, I'm an outsider, and so you know, I'm not part of the club. So I have to I have to go places for for one that I'm welcome, yeah. and where I can voice my opinion without somebody, um, you know, saying I'm a bad person and that they never want to have me on their platform again. What, what platforms have, have banned you? I've been, I've been, um, you know, I tried to go on, I tried to go on The View. They didn't have me on The View. Why? Um, well, a few of the guests just really didn't like where I was coming from. So, uh, or a few of the hosts, I mean. So, that's what I was told by the producers. You know, I don't know if the producers was just copping out and using some of the hosts to to not have me come on and explain myself, but... You'd be a good booking for them. I've been on there before. Yeah. You know, it's just when I've became an independent thinker, when I've, you know, I'm not, you know, I don't, I don't follow their uh, their brand of politics, I guess. But if you can't think for yourself, then you're not really free, are you? No, you're not. You're not. But I've been excluded. I've been excluded on Oprah, you know. I, I, on Oprah? On Oprah, yeah. I've been excluded. Yeah, man. Um, I would think you'd be the person Oprah would want to promote. I mean, you grew up in South Central. You were successful at a young age. You have dignity. You say what you think. Like, I thought that was the goal. Me too. You know, I don't know what it is, but, you know, several of my, you know, I had a movie called Barbershop, you know. Yeah, um, I remember. That, that I wasn't invited to participate with the cast. I uh, produced a show called uh, Black White, uh, and it was, it was a very controversial show. And um, once again, they had the whole cast on, but I wasn't invited. And so I don't know. On I don't Oprah, know what that's, on Oprah's yeah, show. Yeah, so I don't know what that's... A, but really. Oprah's obviously a saintly, godlike figure who's revered by all decent people. Why would she exclude you? I really don't know. You know, that's that's something that I would love to find out. But I, I don't... I can't tell you, you know, if there's a single thing that I've done or said to her. Have you noticed that it is more controversial to criticize Oprah than to burn the American flag. Really? Seems that way. <laughs> I've never heard anybody criticize Oprah. Do you think it's political or do you think it's deeper than that? I, don't, I mean, you're not like a right winger. No. no. No? You don't even seem that political. No, I'm not really. I'm pretty much, you know, um, just want to do right by the people, you know. So that comes through political means, that comes through the private sector. Wherever it comes, you know, uh, I'm down to work with whoever's down to do something right for the people. 
So I remember reading you say something along the lines of, I didn't vote for Trump. I'm not a Trump voter. You actually attacked Trump at one point, but you were willing to meet with Trump. Do you think that crossed the line? I think some people didn't like that, um, but I think it's idiotic. You know, enemies meet. <laughs> right. You know, they, they talk. I'm pretty sure there's some communication between Russia and the Ukraine right now. Somebody's on the phone talking to somebody, mm-hmm. trying to, um, to come up with a, a solution. Um, so we just got to talk. That's the only way we're going to work this out. You know, I know when the talking stops, the fighting starts, you know, a lot of people, they, you know, think I'm a, you know, Republican, I'm I'm a right winger, um, just because I was willing to speak to the Trump organization administration, I mean, and I was willing to speak with the Biden administration as well, you know. Um, Have you? One guy in the administration, but it didn't go anywhere. You know, it was basically a you know, take my temperature kind of call. We'll get to it. Like, But, you know, they they never got to it or never planned to it. As a matter of fact, the guy left the administration, so you know, after after talking to him for a year or so, he was gone, and then, you know, we were left really with no one to, to continue the conversations. What do you think of Biden? I don't think he's giving the people who put him in exactly what they thought they were going to get from him. Um, but his most loyal voters, according to the polls anyway, are black voters, particularly black women, and those numbers don't seem to change, so no matter what happens or doesn't happen. So do you expect they ever will change? You know, whether they become independents and not vote for anybody who's not bringing it, you know, it's like people want your vote. Um, They have to do something to earn it. If they don't earn it, why are you going down there and pulling that lever? Because the other side hates you. That's the... That's the pitch they make. We, we may suck, but the other side hates you. Um, you suppose to dance with the person you brought. Yeah. Um, and the person that, 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 that brought you to the dance, you guys are supposed to dance together. And if, if that doesn't happen, you got to go find another dancing partner before the night is up and the music stops. What do you think of Kamala Harris? I mean, obviously she's a great politician to be able to become the vice president of the country. Um, I don't know how effective she is at her job. What's your view of the police at this point? Um, It's the same, you know. They, <laughs> it really is, you know. It's, 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 it's like looking at, like, what's your view of the military? Like, they're the military. They're always going to be the military. If I asked you this in 1946, you'd be like, they're the military. Yeah. So it's a fraternity. It's an organization that does things a certain way. And I think their philosophy sometimes is detrimental to the people they're serving because I think cops have a win and make it home philosophy. Win whatever battles you have in the street, make it home at night. And that's That's actually the most important thing. And everything else, people's rights, doing things the right way, you know, being totally fair and square all the time and not, you know, being a little aggressive, you know, um, all that comes second to win the encounter, make it home at night. And... You can't really fault somebody for thinking that way as a police officer, but that's the philosophy. So everything else comes second to that. So guy might not care if he violated your rights. He's going to win this encounter. He's going to make it home tonight. And that's all that matters. And sometimes I think that's what we see is uh, in 
an organization hell-bending and winning and not a, and not a fraternity or organization hell-bending hell-bent on upholding the law and doing it right or by the book so to speak yep. yeah and it's just the nature of that fraternity maybe of organizations yeah you know it's they 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 come with a philosophy and you know you can try to buck it if you want to but more than likely they're gonna get you out the way and stay in formation do you think that it's harder to be a man in america now than it was when you were a kid yes saying what you feel being yourself um is is what they call toxic you know we shouldn't be um called toxic for for our instincts and for you know I was born this way what are you talking about you know what I mean like why can't we be ourselves we were born this way too so there are some groups like if I say I'm trans and people say that's great you were born that way we affirm you but if you say I'm just a dude with male instincts you're not affirmed you're attacked Yeah, I mean, everybody doesn't really have to affirm you, you know? If I wake up and say, you know, I'm a, I feel like a pigeon. And I want everybody to treat me like a pigeon. Some people may say, whatever, Q, (laughs) we treat you like a pigeon. But some people may choose to be like, dude, no. That's your world. I'm not part of it. And I have to be ready for that. It's a big world out here. Everybody doesn't have to adhere to me. That's called narcissism, right? Yeah, it seems like it. Um, Yeah. Seems like you're trying to bend the universe to your will. It don't work like that. We've been talking almost all day now. You haven't mentioned race a single time. We've mentioned economics, rich and poor, a number of times. Do you think that we overplay the role of racial conflict in American life? Yes. I think race, it it takes up too much space. Um, There's people that we all have in our lives who are the same race, that we can't stand. And there's people in our lives from other races that we get along with way better. So it's not about race. It's not about color and gender and this and that. It's about who do you connect with? You know, who do you vibrate with? You know what I mean? Who's on the same wavelength? Who wants to be the same kind of person? Who wants to do the right thing when you want to do the right thing? Um, That's who you connect with. So I think a lot of people get make a lot of money off of the racists fighting against each other and bickering, and they the ones who push it in our face all the time that we're separate. And um, does feel like there's more of that, doesn't there? Yeah, it seems like it's. uh, it's like you're stuck in a bad movie and you can't get out. Like you can't find the exit and it continues to play on the screen. And you're just running around looking for the exit. And this bad movie continues to just haunt you day by day by day by day. You know, that's what we're caught in. Um, a, a never ending, winless battle of. of race and color and worried about, you know, where you from and, you know. Hip hop, what's great about hip hop, like, it was a sl- it was a saying in hip hop, early hip hop, I think Rakim coined this phrase, you know, it ain't where you from, it's where you at. You know, and it's so true. It's not about where you come from, it's about where you at right now. I'm not imagining that this stuff is being pushed on us, right? No. Much more than in, say, 1986. 
Yes. Yes, I think so. Because in 1986, you had movies and television, and it was all scripted, and we knew this is a scripted show. But I think now you have so many so-called reality shows that basically push the same thing, but in a reality-like setting. So, you know, you'll watch a movie on race, okay? And you flip the channel now, you're watching a, a somewhat like documentary reality show that's highlighting and, and, and magnifying race and, and, and status and where you belong in this country and where you don't. And, you know, uh, we're highlighting the bad guys here. We're highlighting the good guys, you know. Um, it's, it's just, it's always really showing controversy and pitting each other against each other. And with the reality shows, you know, controversy sells. So they're not showing people getting along. What they right. want to get to is the fight, the conflict, you know, the argument, the throwing of the bottles, the, you know, the turmoil, the differences. Um, and, you know. Does that bear any resemblance to your actual life as someone who lives in this country? Like, do you have racial conflict in your life day to day? Probably, you know, most of them are unseen. You know, uh, I, I'm not going to say I encounter racism. People know who I am. Police know who I am. Everybody knows who I am. So I, I probably get a pass on a lot of things um, that friends, family members, people I associate with, people I love go through all the time because they're not Ice Cube. Um, but, you know, I've had, you know, I've had an insurance company drop me because um, they didn't like my point of view. You know, things like that. Um, are you mad about it? Do you ever, are you mad at people for their skin color ever in the course of a day? Um, I'm not mad at people because of their skin color. You know, I'm mad at people because of what they do and the things they choose not to do. Right. Um, there's a big problem in this country with the financial banking system and black people and our access to capital. You know, I know that when it breaks down, we have, you know, 13 to 15% of the country trying to live off of half a percentage of wealth, you know, 0.5, uh, 0.05% of wealth. So that's an issue. That's a problem. You know, we have to have access to capital so we can do cool things for South Central. You know, if we drove one past one of those um, lots and a guy that lived there wanted to put a store up, he just couldn't get along because of his zip code. Now, guys from outside the area, they can come in and they can get along put that story up and that has to change how do people live in this state who aren't making a lot of money i mean I, things are so expensive houses that used to cost like my, my my father i think he bought his house 47 grand maybe and um now it's worth 650 the house you grew up in the house i grew up in it's worth 650 thousand and that's in South Central. South Central, yeah. Huh. So the middle class has shrunk in this state. Without a doubt, or, or left. You know, they they definitely shrunk, and, and, and we have a lot of people leaving the state because um, they just can't afford it. If you were running the state, wouldn't that be a big concern for you? Yeah. I think uh, it's a major problem because you not only have people leaving, you have industries leaving. You know, uh, Tesla, they just put up a plant in Texas. So you know, they left, they left California. Many, many big companies have left California. 
Mm. I've noticed something weird. I, I'm, I've never been a big hip hop fan, but I've met a you know bunch of hip hop performers. Yeah. And they're all pretty open minded, way more open minded than say your average college professor. I wouldn't have expected that. Why why do you think that is? Um you know, college professors they all want well, they all want their jobs and if their staff or administration is saying, Hey, we think this way at this college, sometimes they they understand what that is and they stick to those guidelines. Um rappers, you know, we're free spirits. Uh, for the most part, some of us who are not locked down to these crazy contracts, but we uh, we know doing things the way they were done in the past hasn't really gotten us as far along as a people as, as we have wanted. So we tend to break the mold. We tend to be disruptors. We tend to um, not wait for invitation to the party. We tend to either come in through the window, <laughs> you know what I mean, or kick the front door down. But we're coming to the party. So that's how we've actually been able to gain success because everybody wants you to be in your little hall. Everybody wants you to, to uh, stay in your lane and all that stupid stuff. And as soon as I hear that, I'm out of my lane immediately. But you should stay in your lane, don't you think? <laughs> no. If I would have stayed in my lane, I wouldn't be here. I would still be in South Central Los Angeles, you know, not following my dreams. So you're not surprised that rappers tend to be more open-minded at all? Not at all. Not at all. Because they they want to go for it. They want new experiences. They want to carve their own path. And, you know, they're not going to conform. They're not going to conform because that gets you nowhere. Folks, that interview... I tell you, I learned so much. Ice Cube did an amazing interview with Tucker Carlson, in my opinion. What say you, folks? What say you? I think he pretty much tells it all. He lays it out on the table. Yes, he did. <laughs> Chronic pain, the inner demon, like... Share, subscribe to the machine. One love. Peace, everybody.